Everyone's scared that artificial intelligence could bring an end to our way of life as we know it. But what if it could help us avoid situations like this? Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to The Science Behind with me, Guy. Today we're talking AI and water, or more precisely, how artificial intelligence is impacting on water management. We're going to be spending some time with the innovation team where we're using new technology, sewer and water quality sensors, along with artificial intelligence, or AI, to better understand our assets and measure their performance. So let's go over to my colleague Alison, who's in Ilkley, to find out more. I've come to meet Tom from our innovation team, who's going to tell us more about how we're using AI to help us understand our network. Hi Tom. And now then Alison, how are we doing? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm pretty well. Good. So Tom, what are we doing today? So today we're going to show you uh, some new technology that we've been using to survey our network to uh, better, better understand it and then we're going to put um, some logging equipment into the, into the manhole which will um, measure the performance of our network and, and alert us to any changes in that performance which could cause flooding uh, to our customers or pollution to the environment. Great, let's go. So Tom, we've got a really interesting bit of equipment behind us here. Um, what role does this play in the whole process? So this product here is called the V-Scout. The top green bit is the lighting rig and then that's got a 360 GoPro camera attached to it. So when that's lowered down uh, a manhole chamber, what that does, it takes 360 footage of that chamber. Um, and then once we give that, put that up into the uh, Subterra AI platform, it can take uh, super accurate measurements of, uh, of the manhole chamber between one and three millimeter accuracy. So for something that looks pretty simple, it's actually really high tech. And that's the beauty of it, it's using off the shelf technology uh, to deliver a really uh, cost effective solution for surveying our assets. We're going to watch the install of one of these loggers in a moment, but can you just talk me through each of the components and what role that plays? Yeah, so this part is uh, an accelerometer and it's in a float and so this uh, goes in the manhole and when the water level rises the float floats on top of the water and the angle changes and when that changes angle it gets up to around sort of the 45 degree mark and, and that would send an alarm back to, to Yorkshire Water to tell us there's a problem developing as a blockage building up in that manhole and we need to come out and, uh, and come out and intervene and the piece that you've got in your hand there that's the logger unit because what angle it's at every two minutes and then that data gets sent back over the internet uh, to uh, to our control room to understand what's going on in that manhole and give us visibility of our network we've got a very different sort of sewer down here and it looks like it's got some different loggers in to the ones that we've seen being installed earlier so how are they different? So the loggers in here are measuring using radar. So they're taking a super accurate measurement of uh, the of the actual level within that sewer. So it works in millimeters, and so off the bottom of the device, it can detect the difference of uh, the level of water in that manhole uh, to within sort of uh, one to two millimeters, and that gets transmitted back to back to sort of our. Uh, control room and over the internet to, uh, to the Storm Harvester AI analytics platform. So how is what they're measuring different? These devices take an accurate level read, uh, whereas before we were using angle as a proxy for uh, uh, detecting a blockage. Mm -hmm. This will tell us exactly what is happening in that sewer at any one time um, and then we can apply some really clever uh, AI technology to that to understand how rainfall is affecting it and the overall performance of our sewer network. Right, we've seen how we monitor levels. Shall we go and have a look at how we monitor the water quality now? Yeah, no problem. We've got uh, one of our water quality sons just down here. Uh, but first, because we're working close to a water course, we need to put our life jackets on. Okay. So we've got the sond. What does it actually do? 
So this is a water bullet sonde, uh, so this is measuring lots of different parameters to understand the, the health of the river wharf. So we've got the, the one strap to the side here, so that's measuring dissolved oxygen content of the river. Uh, and then we've got um, pH, um, turbidity, temperature and ammonia within the sort of the main unit. And the bit in my left hand, uh, that's the actual telemetry unit. So this sends the data back from, from the sonde, which sits in the river, um, back, to, back to Yorkshire Water and back onto our system so we can see that data coming in. So we've seen the level monitors and we've just seen the water quality monitors. What happens next? Yeah, so now let's go have a look at uh, where uh, all the water quality monitor data and all the level monitor goes back to in our control room at Buttershaw. Let's go. John, what's your role at Yorkshire Water? My role is to um, review the outputs of the analytics tools used at Yorkshire Water and then um, I will make decisions on when to raise the relevant work to respond to pollution risks in a, a timely and effective manner. We're, we're using a couple of different AI systems in Yorkshire Water currently. Do you want to talk us through sort of how, uh, how these work and what they're doing? Basically, we have um, a bunch of tools here. So this one particular okay. do is it will take a water level, a rainfall level, and it puts it through the predictive analytics and then if you can see that other predicted line there it will see how far it deviates from that line and then if it goes a certain percentage away then alert accordingly so alert or an alarm and then we can raise the work off the back of that. So we assume that's a blockage based on the water level? Yeah, it's no. the increase as well, it's the fact that it's essentially increased 80% and flattened out. So this technology has helped us find the problem much quicker? Oh certainly, it would have been harder to determine that there was an issue there for the left out. You know, without this uh, tool, there's a lot of the um, side of time would run in perfect fire. Well, it's been great to see how we're using new technology and AI to help improve our network. Yeah, it's uh, it's just the start of our journey. We're um, hopefully through the Innovation Smart Networks pilot, we're going to be, be able to help inform uh, how we roll out more of this technology and more of the AI across the network to prevent pollutions and flooding to uh, people's uh, properties. Right, well, thanks, John, for taking us through the data. And thank you, Tom, for leading us through this episode of The Science Behind. Yeah, you're more than welcome. That was The Science Behind Water and AI, how artificial intelligence is impacting water management. Big thank you to Alison and Tom for taking us through it. Who knew that artificial intelligence was doing so much? You see all about it on the internet, and it's even getting into the water industry and just helping us and helping our customers, which is always great to see. Um, if you like the video, please don't forget to give us a like, subscribe to the channel, leave us a comment below if you've got any thoughts, if you've got any questions, is there anything that we didn't cover that you'd like to know more about, let us know in the comment section below and we will get back to you. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye.